what an absolutely glamorous lamp that is. It would fit in perfectly in my parents' house when I was growing up. We even had peach or apricot skirting boards and architraves. This would have been an absolute treat. However, we are not in the 80s anymore and it is time for me to give this beautiful lady a fresh makeover. Her shape is glamorous. The shade is so elegant. So I'm going to start with some kid gloves by taking the lamp apart and moving the shade to an area where I know it's not going to get crushed or hit or smashed. First things first, let's give these beautiful bases a really good clean down. The ceramic on these was actually in great condition. So all I needed to do was cover up the electric components at the top by simply winding some plastic, some cling film, or even some aluminium foil that you wrap your sandwiches in around the top, just so that we make sure we're not getting any sticky paint or primer on those surfaces. The next is to give it an undercoat or a primer in something that we know is going to not only stick to the ceramic base, but is also going to be a perfect receiver for the feature coat that I want to pop on top. So for this, I'm using a Bin Aerosol Primer. It is made by Zinza and it sticks to anything and undercoat done on number one and she is looking amazing. It is time for number two to get exactly the same treatment. Whenever you are spraying, make sure you do wear your PPE, so your personal protective equipment. So when I'm spraying, I love wearing my mask to keep my lungs safe and also glasses. Now, ideally there would be low wind and ideally you would be in a spray booth, but that doesn't often happen for many of us. So I do like to concoct my own makeshift spray booths every now and then. A big sheet of cardboard to block out any gusty winds can often do the trick. When you spray painting, make sure that you're not doing a windscreen wiper action. Instead, make sure you're doing straight sweeps across the item that you're spray painting to a lighter. Always start with a really light coat first because it's much easier to go over again and again than it is to try and get some of this paint off. Now it's been a little bit of time between the undercoat and me getting a chance to do these top coats, which means they're a bit dusty and they're a bit dirty. So I'm going to give them a really good wipe down to make sure that my top coat is as great as it can be. For this top coat, I've gone for a very deep, bold gray with a little bit of a blue undertone. And you can tell when you're watching me spray paint this that it's so essential when you're spray painting something with so many creases and curves and rolls and rims that you do look at it from every single angle to make sure that you have every piece covered. Let's see what Denise thinks. Cute, wow, huh? That's really cute. That's really sweet. Oh, it's so much better than the white. I, for some reason I thought it was stained white. No, that was just the etching primer. So it had a, a bin yeah. etching primer. And then this is actually a standard color bond color called basalt. So it comes in a quick dry. That's really nice. So it's gonna have glossy. the- Glossy. It is. Glossy, glossy. <laughs> it's gonna have this pastel pink and the white pom-poms, just for a bit Gorgeous. of contrast. Gorgeous. Yeah. Get some bulbs. Bases are done and it is time to give this shade a makeover. I'm looking to cover this in a very, very sheer and delicate floral. I'm going to be needing to use a pile of pins and to start this off, I'm gonna simply roll over the top of the cut edge of the fabric and secure it with a pin. To make sure you get an even distribution of these gorgeous little pinch pleats all around, I like to do it a quarter at a time. Once 
Once I secured the top edge with pins, I simply hand sewed that with a standard needle and thread. There's nothing special about what you need to use here. You could also use a hot glue gun to do that, but I find a needle and thread just has less weight to it, it's less messy and it's really simple. And then all you need to do is press repeat. Follow the line of the pleat all the way down to the bottom edge of the shade, sew that in place and then cut off the excess. Now for the fun part, I get to attach the trims, the bells and the whistles, or pom-poms in this case. So along the base and the top of this lampshade, I'm attaching an absolutely gorgeous white pom-pom braid. So as you can see here, there's a freshness and a bit of frivolity, which really lifts the traditional floral that I've placed on top of the shade. To secure this, it is as simple as using a hot glue gun. And there you go. She was completely worth the investment in time, energy and love. Apricot no more. As Denise would say, classy, classy, classy. A beautiful lamp makeover that anyone could do. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following me on Instagram to see my latest design and reno inspiration. You can find me at Naomi Findlay Official or click the link in my description. See you soon.